Participation and the impact of youths in economic development in Kenya is at another level. In today's program, we have Philip Pande, a man wearing many hats. Let's hear more. Philip, welcome to the program. How did you step into this leadership space? Many thanks for having me, Granice. Um, it's always a pleasure speaking about the youth and especially what we do in adding our voices to this social or economic development in this country, political participation and overall innovation, uh, innovation ecosystem. My name is Philip Pande, uh, born and bred in this uh, very good county of Kisumu, the most strategic city in the East African community. <laughs> okay. um, where it all started, I think leadership for me is, uh, is in it. In um, I started doing this at an early age in, in preschool and in my entire primary school I, I was in, in leadership roles. It took uh, a better shape in, in high school and um, more meaning in, in the university where uh, before being elected into the university uh, council as a member of the student council Initially, I held a number of roles in the Catholic Association, being a class representative, being a, a secretary of uh, many other clubs and a project manager of, you know, the most popular club in the university then, which was the environmental club. So uh, that's the beginning, that's the routine. And of course, uh, a bit of nurturance and mentorship here and there. I'm interested to understand what motivated you to pursue leadership as a career path. I think I discovered at an early age that um, leadership was part and parcel of my life. And so uh, it was rather important for me to embrace than, den than denying the fact that uh, I needed to uh, stand in and, and, and give more of my time and skills to my colleagues, my peers, my community. And so after my first degree in, in the university, which was economics and sociology, also touching on lives of, of the people, uh, socioeconomic uh, issues, uh, analyzing the context in which we lived, I decided to undertake a master's in governance and, and leadership, of course, still going on uh, wow. pretty much at the latter stages. But uh, yes, that I think reinforces what I do and what I practice on a daily basis. Mm. You talk more about the people. What, imp what critical area did you focus on, or are you focusing on about the people you're talking about? Firstly, when I talk about the people, I talk about the society as it is, and, uh, and humanity as it were. But of course, with a, a great emphasis and focus on, on the young people, and the forgotten bottom millions for, for that matter. People living with disability, women in uh, under-resourced and underprivileged backgrounds, people living in hardships and assault counties, for example. And uh, those who have for many years not been included in, uh, in the mainstream governance, in uh, our workings as, as, as a country, and uh, of course in, in participation in economic and uh, social activities in, in our country. So my people in, in this aspect uh, really uh, revolves around young people, revolves around people with disability, revolves around women, and revolves around the aspect of, of inclusion. We are talking about uh, gender equality, social inclusion uh, in this time and, and era in the day. And how has the community received your agenda to bring social change in these different aspects? Over time, we've realized that uh, people are, are conscious of, of the environment. People are aware that um, there is some sort of exclusion. Uh, people are aware that uh, resources for young people are not as, as it should be. 
uh, you look at our budgeting framework, you look at the amount of resources that are located, uh, for example, in gender responsive budgets, if you look at uh, with a critical eye, county budgets and national government budgets on, on, uh, on spending on, on young people uh, or people living with disability for that matter, you don't see it uh, with, the, with the seriousness uh, it should be uh, taking. And so uh, every day we, we get people embracing us, we get communities embracing our work. We've uh, been to at least 37 of the 47 counties in this country. Wow, that's trying to, Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Trying to mentor young people, trying to build capacities of uh, grassroots women. And, and we say, for example, that you don't need an education to be included. You need to be a Kenyan. You need to be a, a citizen of this country to share in the development of this country, to innovate, to be creative, to be hard, and to be considered in terms of development and inclusion in overall uh, governance framework. And uh, let me take you back a bit. You've talked about Chuka University. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were awarded a rare Un European Union champion title when serving as the youngest Chuka University Senate member. How did all this become possible? So, uh, at that time, um, this way back in 2014, uh, when I was an elected student leader uh, in the academics docket, so direct academic affairs, and my role was to, you know, take care of the affairs that touched academic, uh, touched discipline, touched ex ex extension and, and stakeholder management um, in, in that regard. And so the uh, EU uh, office in, in Nairobi was working with a number of universities, I think could be six to eight in Kenya to um, mainstream certain uh, opportunities that were there in terms of scholarships, in terms of uh, uh, furthering uh, the education post uh, the first degree and linkages with the, the EU space uh, and, and, and community as it is. So in organizing the event at, at Chuka University and the overall collaboration with the eight universities, uh, I think it's in my university that they got the highest turnover uh, uh, and, and, and attendance uh, of about 6,000 students participating in one day. Um, and other than that, then there were other aspects, I think, that they considered that led to, to that award. So dedication to service and, and just ensuring that ultimate numbers and, and maximum beneficiaries were part of this program then led to that consideration, I think. Speaking of dedication to service, you have an experience in mainstreaming youth inclusion through mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, innovation, mentoring policy and advocacy. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide that to take this path, these specific factors in youth inclusion? Well, the main exclusion factor revolves around politics and economics. Economics in the sense that even in, uh, in terms of accessing political platforms, political parties, and winning or running successful election campaigns, you, you need resources, economic resources. Um, deviant behavior among young people, for example, is motivated by the fact that they, they are out of work or they are unemployed. And of course, we talk about unemployment overly in, in our context. So we realize that we, we can't keep on, you know, playing the rhetoric to young people of, you know, reform, come back to, to this, do this, uh, uh, be nice in your, in your, in your conformity to, to the law and, and order. But we need to provide real uh, aspects of, of life and ensure that everybody is able to fend for themselves, that young people are able to feed themselves, that um, people living with disability are able to be economically viable in terms of running enterprises and businesses. So we thought that uh, as a substitute to um, the song, 
of, uh, of, of behavior change and, and such like. There was a real need to talk about the economic well-being of young people. And that's where I ended up in your ship as an alternative came in because unemployment is, is, a real, is a real thing. We are talking about Kenya being in the, in the space where uh, the youth bulge is, is, is really threatening our fabrics. We can't really plan our resource envelopes to take care of the interest of the wide population of, of young people. Averagely, the median age of, of, of Kenya as a country is about 19.7. So when you have that being um, uh, the majority in, in this country, as a country and as a continent, we may not be able to provide jobs that match the demand. So entrepreneurship is an alternative, but in, in mainstreaming entrepreneurship, then innovation and creativity is part and parcel of, of young people, of the millennials, of the gener uh, generation Z that we talk about. We, we are more inquisitive, we are more inclined towards tech and innovation, we are more inclined towards STEM and uh, manipulating uh, alternatives in that space to, to create businesses, to uh, prototype products and to sell and launch in, in the market out there. Mm -hmm. So entrepreneurship and innovation uh, provides for us a more meaning than uh, you know, mainstreaming employability without facilitating job creation, without facilitating startups, without facilitating people who want to employ themselves. And the, how much of a gap have you been able to bridge since you started this journey of youth inclusion? Very well. Um, that becomes a tricky subject. Uh, <laughs> we may not be able to quantify uh, or basically qualify uh, our impact. Mm -hmm. But um, looking at what we've been able to do, um, working with the initial even the Office of the President, strategic initiatives, we've been able to, one, go to 37 counties, like I mentioned. And in those 37 counties, we have over 100,000 young people that we've mentored and uh, installed as grassroots change drivers. Um, other than that, we've opened up, uh, we've opened up, um, innovation hubs uh, in, in, many, in many counties now. Uh, specifically, if you go to Transoia today, you'll find the Corn Valley Hub uh, working with young people. If you go to Wajia, you'll find the Abaswain Hub. If you go to Kisi, you'll find Tabaka Innovation Hub. So those innovation hubs work as uh, accelerator points and safe spaces for the youth. Uh, in terms of providing direct employment, uh, I, I would say that uh, nearly half a million people have found jobs, uh, either mainstreaming online uh, um, and digital jobs through our partners that have been able to, to work with us, uh, mainstreaming uh, innovation and ensuring that agribusiness, for example, and, and green jobs, uh, ecological protection and, and afforestation now, taking shape and, and employing grassroots young people in, uh, be it a tree nursery, be it um, um, a conservation space, be it uh, um, a farm, a demo farm, and actual production of, of food and lifting livelihoods out of poverty in the rural areas. Um, we've worked with a number of partners, development partners, uh, GIZ, UK Tech Hub, and, and many others. And uh, we've worked with the uh, other friendly organizations like the Forgotten Bottom Millions, which is an Africa-wide network for young people seeking opportunities. So we don't only provide opportunities in, uh, in entrepreneurship and innovation. We also share scholarship opportunities. Uh, we share uh, uh, opportunities in, in, in mainstream employment. We share opportunities in, in collaborating with other people in, uh, in in development projects and uh, anything that engages young people and ensures that uh, you know we are retooling young people to productive uh, uh, manpower and skilled uh, uh, labor that is required for the 21st century jobs. At this time, we are also mainstreaming uh, AI 
uh, as, as part of innovation. We know, for example, that we are talking about AI taking up uh, space in, in employment, but we're also saying that uh, uh, more jobs will be created through uh, innovation in the AI space, uh, artificial intelligence and, and many others. So we are training people on, on, on robotic uh, processes uh, automation. Uh, we are training people on uh, um, uh, business reengineering, for example, so that you don't just go into a business uh, or an organization like an analyst, but you can be a business uh, uh, engineering expert uh, and ensuring that you know you add unique value to spaces that you venture into. There's so much you're talking about, opportunities, scholarships. So how do, does that information get to get to the public through your forums? So, for example, um, an organization that is filling up this space is called Forgotten Bottom Millions, which uh, picks um, opportunities that are available on the internet, in social media platforms, and verifies and then consolidates those information and shares on WhatsApp platforms, on uh, our websites, on, on Facebook pages, and on our individual timelines. And somebody just by a click of, of, of a button, then you land onto a page that offers you a job. Uh, you could be in Nairobi or in Kisumu, but you're working for a UK or a US farm remotely. And many other young people are doing that, digital jobs and digital transformation. You could, by a click of uh, uh, a button, find an opportunity that lands you in uh, a German university or a Canadian university to study your master's or do a remote program in, in trying to advance your skills. And so that comes uh, in handy by, you know, just having a tool. And now we are developing a tool that uh, through artificial intelligence that aggregates opportunities, especially startup opportunities. So internships, uh, scholarships, uh, uh, pupillage programs, um, programs that are run around graduate uh, trainee uh, programs, um, and aggregating them and ensuring that we receive, verify, then uh, share out with young people seeking opportunities. Yeah. And could you mention some of these YouTube, uh, uh, Facebook pages, websites that someone can go look into so that they can click on the opportunities? Very well. Today I'm, I'm more engaged at uh, Corporate Career Academy as my main business now, mentoring young people and providing opportunities. So if you're looking for such, we are working with university students, we are working with out-of-school youth. Uh, go onto our Facebook pages uh, for, uh, I mean, uh, Corporate Career Academy on LinkedIn, on, on Facebook, on, on Twitter, you'll find opportunities shared. Uh, other than uh, the Corporate Career Academy, I've mentioned the Forgotten Bottom Millions, which is a, a key platform, uh, bigger than many other organizations now in sharing out verified opportunities. Go to their social media handles. Um, you could also find opportunities in the closest uh, hub around you. Uh, there are youth innovation hubs in, in nearly all counties now. Um, but again, as a young person with, uh, with a smartphone, mm -hmm. you are not short of opportunities. There are unlimited opportunities online. Just search anything that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Search for scholarships, you'll find um, numerous. Find Search for opportunities on online jobs, look for freelancing uh, platforms like, uh, you know, um, there, are, there are many now. You, you, you look at, uh, at, at, at the Google uh, workspace, you'll find, uh, you'll find jobs. You look at uh, Fever, you'll find jobs. You look at uh, uh, Ajira digital platform, you'll find jobs and, and many others. Uh, so both from government side and in the development space, there are just unlimited opportunities. And of course, one thing that we're also trying to fight is young people's resentment on, on, uh, on applying for jobs and hiring. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a belief uh, in this country that uh, most of those jobs that are advertised out there are already filled. Maybe, maybe not. But um, when it's your time, 
nothing stops you. Keep applying, keep sending out your CV on anything that comes uh, or pops up on your screen that you think is suitable. If you qualify at least 70%, that's an opportunity that could come your way. Always keep up shooting so that when when it's your day, when it's your time, sometimes luck pays than, than, than any other thing. It could be a lucky day. Yeah. Your interest in grassroots youth organization, mm -hmm. how can you describe your unique leadership towards that? Well, I think we are focused primarily on grassroots because uh, there are quite a lot of opportunities in 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 the capital, Nairobi. There are quite a lot of opportunities in major towns, but if you go to the villages, if, if you are not in the, in the farm tilling your, 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 your garden, if you're not involved in, uh, in, in brick making, if you're not involved in, uh, in odd jobs, really, then you have no opportunities. So our target has always been to go to where the action is limited and where there are less opportunity and where information asymmetry has ensured that you know young people are not uh, wired or conditioned to accessing opportunities or being more aggressive. If you live in the informal settlement, for example, or if you live in the Assam counties, um, there are no TVs there. There are some of the spaces without even internet access and people living in those spaces have hardships even buying smartphones so perhaps the only opportunity they get is when a mentor uh, fills the role and, and goes into an interactive session with them and, and exposes them to an opportunity and so that's why we're also encouraging for shared spaces and safe spaces for young people so that if if i don't have a computer if i don't have a smartphone but i can walk into uh, a community hub, I could walk into an innovation hub that is in my neighborhood, use a computer, collaborate with other, other colleagues, and, and help in setting goals that then we keep on accounting to and being able to just ensure that everybody is taken care of. This is quite a responsibility you've taken on. What challenges have you uh, had while on this journey and how did you maneuver them? Well, when you fill the role such as ours, everybody thinks that you could employ them, you could link them to an opportunity. But you tell them, okay, uh, let's go through this process. Let me share what's available next week so you could look at. Let me share random opportunities. And people do not want to follow that process. They, they want instant solutions. Like I want a job and I want you to identify what fits me so that you give it to me. So when we share opportunities or when we invite you to participate in, in a workshop or in a mentoring event, then show up. Because when you show up, you, you link up with other people, you listen to stories that you've not heard before, and you realize that you need to trust the process. Yeah. And uh, where do you see yourself in the future doing this career? I'm looking forward to an, an opportunity to be able to ensure that young people in this country and persons living with disability are just as included as women. In the last decade, we've, we've seen a lot of transformation in the gender space, uh, constitutionally and in terms of legal frameworks. I'm looking forward to a day when the Senate of this country, for example, can say that in the county government's uh, operations, uh, particularly in the County Governments Act, we are able to ensure that young people are part and parcel of cabinets, are part and parcel of, of decision-making roles, so that it starts from ground up. And I'm looking forward to a day when uh, the national government, through the National Assembly, will be able to legislate and install legal frameworks where young people do not have to you know, make a lot of noise to be heard that our voices should be just as important as any other person in, in this space. As a leader yourself, what advice would you give a young person wanting to be a leader in the future and they're shy to get into that space? 
So if, if you want to make an impact as a young person, firstly, dedicate yourself to voluntary opportunities and paid labor and uh, be able to be counted in terms of making the difference. The other thing is look for mentorship. You can't do it alone and you are probably navigating a space where you have less uh, skills. You need to find a mentor that uh, then helps you to set goals and targets and helps you to account. Uh, so you must also be you know, thick-skinned to ensure that uh, when your peers are, uh, for example, not buying in, sometimes they say that to support the youth ecosystem, you need to use one hand to, you know, hold the critics and those who are going to be weighing you down and the other arm to do exactly what you're supposed to do. So that is part and parcel of, of the youth space. There is quite unlimited um, space for anyone that wants to venture in. This is amazing work you're doing. You have Thank so you. much. And if a young person could listen and akushikilia mkono, then I'm sure they'll be going so far. Dedicate yourself to opportunities. Show up. Find that mentor who will help you, who will lead you, and who will guide you in the right path. This has been Youth in Action. See you next time. I am Nyangwe Sogrenis. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.